So the compact disc turns 40 years old. Let the nostalgia begin. Hi, my name is Frank. Welcome back to channel 33 RPM, your channel for vinyl gear and more. So I can admit it, I am feeling a strong sense of nostalgia for this technology. I know not everyone is going to feel the same way as I do. And I would love to get your take on this after you watch this video. But before you comment saying, Frank, my God, CDs suck. Hear me out. I am 49 years old, born in 1973. And when the CD came out in, 19, in the early 1980s, it was quite revolutionary for me and for my friends. Growing up and before the CD, I would listen to records, as I obviously still do. And I would listen to tapes. But there were obvious issues, faults with both of those mediums, right? Which we're fully aware of. Records are big, they're bulky, they can scratch easily. It's not necessarily easy to switch from track to track. They're not portable. Then came the cassette and the cassette was good too. I would often as a kid tape, tape my records onto cassette and that made them portable. But tapes would get eaten easily. It was not easy to skip between songs. There was a hiss on tapes, right? Records had the snap, crackle, and pop. Tapes had the hiss. And then came along the CD, which promised perfect sound forever. Obviously, we know that was a marketing ploy. But regardless, it was quite revolutionary. It was a small, compact format. Later, you could take it in your cars or in your Discman. There were problems with the Discman and skipping, but whatever. It was somewhat portable. You could skip songs. There was no snap, crackle, and pop. There was no hiss. And in a sense, it just really revolutionized the way we listen to music. I'll get more to that in a second. Personally, I got my first CD player mm, like 1989, 1990. I had my eye on the prize, man. When I was 15, I got a job flipping burgers at McDonald's. The first thing I bought was a brand new electric guitar. Second thing I bought was a boom box. And the third thing I bought was a CD player. So I knew, I knew I was going to be getting a CD player. In anticipation of that, I joined the Columbia House record tape and CD club and I'd order like the 10, 10 compact discs. They had those waiting at home knowing I would get a CD player. And I finally saved up enough money. I'm trying to remember how much it was at the time. It's somewhere between $250 and $300 for a regular Sony CD player. No remote control, nothing like that. And I brought it home. I remember putting it, attaching it and hooking it up to our component stereo system and pulling out the CD and putting it in. And man, that was so cool and to my ears sounded great. I didn't have the most refined ears and I still don't. And I know there were a lot of faults with those original early CDs and the way the audio was transferred and blah, blah, blah. Of course there were issues, but man, to me, it was so cool. I didn't buy a lot of CDs beyond those Columbia house ones at first because compact discs were expensive, man. If you remember at the time, a CD cost twice what a record or tape did. So it was really an investment to want to buy a CD. They were, at least here, they were like, oh man, 16, 17, 18, 19 bucks, something like that. If you went to HMV, from what I remember, HMV was the most expensive. So as kids, we avoided HMV, but yeah, I mean, sometimes we'd find for 15 bucks, but it's usually like 16 to $18. So it certainly was an investment to buy those discs. And I said, me and my friends loved them, but I kind of get nowadays. And even back then, a lot of people really dislike the CD and I get it, man, especially people my age or old Older, who had grown up with records and investing all this money in their record collections. And that was the format, man. That's what you liked. That's what you loved. Then along comes the CD. Record companies, are gr record companies aggressively push this technology out. And in a matter of years, music stores went from having rows and rows of records and tapes to having rows and rows of compact discs and tapes. And then later, just compact discs, everything else got phased away. So I get it, that would piss me off. And you know, I may even hold a grudge to this day. People younger than me too, who dislike CDs, I completely get that as well. In some respect, it's the parents technology, right? It's what your parents listen to. My brother who is 12 years younger than me never bought any music in his life. He grew up in the Napster age, downloading stuff. So he's no fan of CDs. Ultimately, I don't think CDs sound bad. Over the years, there's been issues. The sound has been brick walled and that's created problems. So I'm not saying this technology is not without its faults. But going back to an earlier point I made, those discs really did revolutionize 
and change the way we listen to music. Gotta remember, before CDs, most albums were 40, 45 minutes long, just enough to fit on a 12 inch LP. After the CD came out, artists and record labels began to realize, hey, we can put a lot more music on these. You can fit 70 to 75 minutes of music. So all of a sudden, where albums would have eight or nine tracks, all of a sudden they started having 10, more than 10, 12, 13, 14 tracks. So that was one of the big takeaways from the CD era, right? Just fit a lot more music on it and people really started to take advantage of that. So yes, I have continued to buy CDs over the years and yes, I will continue to buy CDs, especially with the rising cost of records, right? CDs are, an affordable alternative to the 12 inch wax. I am not here to argue that compact discs are the ultimate music format, but on the 40th birthday of these discs, I do think it's important to recognize the impact the CD has had on music, both good and bad. And maybe, just maybe admitting that it's okay to have some feelings of nostalgia for the humble CD.